Hi everyone, welcome back to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. Uh, pleased to say I'm joined by Owen again today. Me and Owen having a collab together on the channel for a while and uh, not too many better opportunities to do it because that was an Owen Parks performance last night. Everton drawing 3-3 uh, at Old Trafford. Um, Owen, minus the clean sheet, you're made up, aren't you? Well, it wasn't for 45 minutes, I was tearing my hair after half time. <laughs> Absolutely, even with the first half performance, because I thought we played right into their hands, giving the ball away in our own half too much. But second half was about as perfect performance you can get at Old Trafford. Um, three moments in the game in the second half, we took all three. And I thought we defended very well in the second half as well. Individual added with the goalkeeper. But apart from that, I thought we defended well. I think the second goal was due to us not closing down Bruno Fernandes. He just he's just allowed to take as much time as he wants with the ball and hit it. The first goal, I, I think we're a bit deep. I think we should have been ten yards further forward to try and force them back because they were just allowed to run into that space and put the cross in. I think we should have put a bit more pressure on them. But yeah, apart from that, I think I'm absolutely delighted with the point. I think if you'd have offered me a point before the game, I would definitely have took it. Um, four points on lead to Man United. It's a very good return. Um, and we just roll on. Carlo Ancelotti was asked after the game, what are the strengths of this Everton team? And he and he just listed the loads of just amazing words to describe this Everton team, such as fights, adaptability, we can defend, we're good at set pieces, all of this good stuff. So, Obviously, he's recognised what the strength of Everton's team is and he uses them from week to week. Whereas there would be managers who would see them as the strengths of them, do something completely different just to suit their own philosophy. So uh, I'm, I'm glad how we're, we're getting on at the moment. We're really good position in League six, Top 6. We've got a couple of games in hand, but I think we can be pleased with how we're going. I think Fulham's next in the league, I think. What's different between them and Newcastle and as a sort of a, a parochial team at home is that Fulham like to have a lot of the ball so we can sort of hit them in transition a lot more than we would be able to Newcastle who would like to sit behind the ball. So that, that's looking positive for what we've got coming up. Spurs as well be an interesting game. But yeah, really pleased with the point. But it, this would be a very different show if we'd finished at half-time because it was... Not very happy to put it, to give you the political answer on Evan first half performance. Yeah, um, the second half, it was night and day, wasn't it, lad? You know, the um, I it, it's crazy to have a manager who at half time doesn't give up when we're 2 0 down. You we used to go in places like that and Everton rolling over and having their bellies tickled, and it happened, at, you know, I was fuming at half time. Because I was thinking this is another one of these little old Everton going away to a top six team and falling apart. When I wanted to see more of what we had against Tottenham, and we had that, you know, we came out and we played like we did against Tottenham in the, you know, on the first day of the season. Well, my, my the comparison I was drawing, I think are a better team than Tottenham is Leicester. I think mm -hmm. we should have just done what we did there. We defended really well there that day. I think that was as perfect performance as you can get away from home before we got to be Leicester. But you're right. The reason why I was I wasn't happy at half time was because our game plan what we've been playing for the last couple of months just do any it was non existent. We were playing some form of diamond and we were losing the ball in our own half and we couldn't get out. So I just thought it was weak mm -hmm. a week before from Evan, we just wilted. So I, but that being said, the second half was the complete opposite. I thought we were brilliant to force. We did everything. As a half, I forget about the situation we were two down. As you, as you play a half or Old Trafford, we were brilliant. Yeah, and you can't be going... And we played the same way the second half as we did first half. We won that game very comfortably. Yeah, you can't be going to teams like Man United with players like they've gotten, putting weak performances in from the first minute. Luckily... Okay, we more aggressive. Yeah, we yeah. The ball pretty well. Luckily, um, we sort of turned it round because we've been playing badly coming out in the second half recently. Been coming out in the yeah. second half and sitting back and we did the complete opposite because... And he didn't change it as well. You know, thought uh, the, the commentator was making a big thing about he didn't make any changes. And then he had his wo words within about 10 minutes because we were 
back up to 2-2. Um, that Hammers Rodriguez goal was just fantastic as well. I could watch that on repeat over and over again. Um, yeah, you know, but... Like the ball through to Luca Dean and then just taking it. And uh, we've seen him score goals for us, but that one was like, that was a classic Hammers Rodriguez goal, cutting in on his left and just putting in the bottom corner. Um, mentioned there about, it's annoying as well because um, barring that Robin Olsen mistake, we could have, that could have been a, a you know a winner in the last minute, which would have just been ten times better. But um, what do you make of Olsen? Well, I because I don't think we'd have thrown everyone forward in the last minute for a free kick. <laughs> no, but you like to hope, lad. I was just all all night just thinking. What imagine if that was a winner at Old Trafford? That would have been unbelievable. Um, because obviously well, the fans. Ten seconds left. On the clock, <laughs> and he got a free kick just for everyone for him. So yeah, yeah. Nice. I was made that we actually did throw Olsen forward because the minute the free kick got given, I thought right with four. Well, like what were we? We were like thirty seconds over time, I think. He was going to blow the whistle at any point so anyway. So yeah, free kick I, I, th- I think did so he give four or five minutes? Robin Olsen's t- del- delivering whether to go forward. Why wouldn't you go forward? He I know. It's not like they're going to score if he doesn't. Do you know what I mean? And it's free to two anyway. So yeah, yeah. Like we were, we were getting beat. Why wouldn't he have gone forward? Honestly, yeah. God, the, the sheer lack of knowledge of football. The commentary was awful last night, mate. Like, I, I know I've, there's been some bad commentary recently, but that one takes the cake for me. It wasn't a... It, it it wasn't as bad as Paul Dempsey and Robbie Savage against Leicester the other week. Oh yeah, to be fair, yeah, they were willing to score. Honestly, yeah, it was uh, ridiculous. Yeah, um, but obviously, what do you think of that Robin Olsen thing? Because we were, I don't know, I'm a I'm a Robin Olsen fan, and I disagree with people going, "Oh, the Robin Olsen loving's over now," and all that. Just people who. Yeah, <laughs> People who defend Pickford, so, you know yeah, what I mean? Sorry, people who defend Pickford, it's people who just want to rise on social media. It's nonsense, honestly. Some of the stuff I saw last night about Robin Olsen was really bizarre. I think he had he slipped, and I think any goalkeeper on a wet surface can slip. I, it, you're right, if it was Jordan Pickford, I'd be saying the same thing. But For me? The first one, I thought it was a bit of an error as well. But look, it is what it is. I think he's... Given us enough good performances to have that one, just sort of, you know. If you look at it, Owen, right? Give him the benefits of the doubt. Yeah, fair enough. He slipped and he probably should have saved it. But his mistakes are not as flamboyant and and costly as Pickford's. I know he cost us a goal, but you know what I mean. It's not like I think Pickford comes out and probably punches it to a player, or Pickford drops it or something. Whereas. Yeah. Olsen just gets caught and it goes late into the into the corner. Um and yet he should have saved it. But I still think he's better than Pickford. Yeah, and I, yeah, I think but he made some ridiculous saves at Leeds as well. So you're gonna dig him out for so Yeah, you don't you have to praise him for the Leeds performance because he, he got us the three points, truth be told. And we need to stick with the goalie because we we can't be swapping the goalies. I know Carlo likes to swap the goalkeepers every now and then, but Go on. I, I I like him. I think um, he made a couple of bad errors, and but if it was John Pickford, we'd be saying the same thing. But yeah, at the end of the day, are you just going to change a goalkeeper every time he drops one? I mean, you can't, you can't keep exactly. doing it. So exactly, you know, can't. I would give him the benefit of the doubt, and he made another mistake. You revert back and just give John Pickford a run. But I think he's done more than enough in his performances at Leicester, Robin Olsen, and Leeds, and why have you not? To suggest to me he's a good goalkeeper. Yeah, I'd agree with you. I think he's still a better option for us at the moment. He's definitely more safe because when the ball goes near him, it's not he like. You know what I mean? He isn't a goalkeeper who well, he's going to make 40 saves in a match and drag you through. He doesn't seem to me he's going to do that, but he, does, he seems to me. Yeah, me and Teddy were talking about it. He does the easy stuff well, and that's good enough for me because that's the first thing you've got to do. And I don't think Pickford does the easy stuff well. Um, I think I'd rather just... And as well, something important to remember, Owen, is the defence plays better when Robin Olsen plays, in my opinion. 
So that's something to remember as well. You're not just sacrifice. You're not just sacrificing the goalkeeper spot when Pickford plays, but you're unsettling your defenders. And our defense has been great. When I mean, we put probably our best defensive performance in the other night against Leeds, and um, and he was in goal. And I think it goes a lot further than just dropping the ball or how good your kicking is. It goes. It goes all the way up the team, doesn't it? Yeah. And for me, the way I look at it is that last night was a bit of a crazy game. It was. They scored, we scored. It was just a crazy... It's not going to be like that every week for Adam. It was just a one-off game where we went two behind through our own faults and we made the second half a bit of a crazy game. We made a couple of mistakes. They, their goalkeeper... We had three shots on target and they all went in. So, where does that leave David De Gea? I mean, yeah. Um, I, For me, I just... I just think that we, we should be really happy with the points and the... If, the same mistakes happen again. We we look at them more closely, but I think it's all Trafford. You've got a point from it, so you, you really you just have to be thankful with what you've got. To be honest, um, and you, like you said, then three shots on target and all them went in. Didn't have a shot on target in the first half. It's the first time this season. Um, I just thought of you, lad. When when I seen that stat, I thought. Oh, and will be dead satisfied by that. Three shots on target, three goals. Yeah, that's what. We, yeah, it's being clinical. I think I've sort of been moaned sometimes in the last couple of weeks when we took a one 0 lead and we've not been clinical to get the second and kill the game off. Today, yesterday, we were really clinical. Sort of shots on their goal, we had or went in. I think we had another chance of Luca Dean. I went close. I think they had the post in the. And Rich and yeah. Charleston at the end, but everything that we've got on target went in. So I don't know where that leaves David the guy, truth be told. But hey, and we won the XG as well. So what a nice delay. Our very own Icelandic stat, Owen Parks from the Toffee Blue. Yeah, well, we won the XG. Apparently that means something. Yeah, I don't even I don't have a clue, to be honest. <laughs> the XG. Um, Tom Davis and Andre Gomez as well. Someone yeah, I thought they were fantastic. Looked like someone put a rocker up Tom Davis in that game. He was he was fantastic. It was like he was good when he came on against Leeds as well. But then again, I so Tom, go on. I think since Tom Davis has come into the team when Alan got injured, I think he's been brilliant. Yeah, I think pretty much every game he's been brilliant. Yeah, he he, he does a very limited basic part of the game, sitting in front of the back four, which doesn't require much mobility. Just good position and good diligence, and he, he's got all that. I think he he's definitely someone I'd, I'd have in the team while Alan's not playing because I think he does that role really well. Mm. I've said the same for a while. I think he's a decent player. If he's your third or fourth choice midfielder going forward, you're doing very well because he's a good, he's a decent yeah. player. I think as for Gomez, I think he did very well again. I think first half, I think he he was guilty for me passing back too much when he could have just hit the channels, but. I think he's just, I don't know. Yeah, I think he was caught into the sort of mentality the whole team was in, just playing it safe. But I think, again, the last couple of weeks, he's been really good as well. I think can like to see it continue as well. But we will see ultimately. But I'm still a bit of a skeptic around Andre Gomez. But I think last night and the last couple of games, he's been really good. So may that continue as well. Um, and Decore. One unbelievable football after the light of the is. I remember we was it just before or just after the Fulham game a couple of weeks a couple of months ago. Someone had the absolute goal to tell me he hadn't had one good game for Everton, which just tells me they knew nothing about football. They think have to lie the Corey. Get your da- <laughs> get your um your, your bingo cards out, guys. We just had another uh, Owen Parks one there. <laughs> they know not. They know, which tells me they know nothing about football. <laughs> if they don't know, if they no, know, no, like, no, I agree with you, mate. If they don't, if they don't understand what Abdullah Dukore brings to the seven team, I'm sorry, they should just watch. I don't know hockey or something because he he's brilliant. He sets the energy, wins balls. He's just brilliant. I, I, I'm signing of the season for me for us because I think he's been. He's given us the biggest lift in midfield anyone could have hoped. So, yeah, I love the guy. I, in the early games, um, like the first few games of the season, and that, I thought he was all right, but I didn't. I didn't think I didn't like like him as much as some of the other players, like Rodriguez and Allen and stuff like that. 
Um, but like, it's the last few games for me. He's just been, and uh, it's probably the Everton admin on Twitter bigging him up with his heat maps and that. But like, yeah. um, he just seems to. He seems to just carry the weight of the team on his shoulders at times. Like uh, in that it, the first sort of ten minutes, that second half, you know, when he got his goal, um, he just seemed to be doing things right. He seemed to be carrying more responsibility on his shoulders. He's just and he's a fantastic player. Let's not let's not like beat around the bush. He's just a brilliant player. Um, really yeah, so thank God for again at the back. Ha <laughs> ha, covered very well. Uh, yeah. Ben Godfrey, have you seen that? Uh, defense, that he? thing, yeah. the poet and the poem with uh, Ben Godfrey <laughs> shouting yeah. at the Man United players. He's, <laughs> he's fantastic. Um, just like we'll we'll um, we'll round it off now. Do you think we made a mistake dropping Yeri Mina because he had yeah, a brilliant because he was brilliant against Leeds, wasn't he, Yeri Mina? I think the sort of the formation was a mistake with the diamonds. We swapped their half time. But I, I would have started with Obi playing off the right instead of one of the midfielders, probably Gomez. And then at the back, I would have had Yeri Mina over um, probably probably Michael Keane, considering that defence did so well the other night. But I think Michael Keane, he had a difficult game last night, but I think he's been brilliant as well. I think we've got defenders who really like defending. We, we do really well to... But our strengths are most clearly defending well. So mm. it would be, sh- be ridiculous for me for us to ever try and change that in the short term because it wouldn't it wouldn't it wouldn't get us any more points to one and two. It would stop the sort of cry out and that I've been sharing over Twitter the past week of opposition fans, most notably Leicester and Leeds fans absolutely human without ever can play. So <laughs> let's just keep defending to annoy them. Um yeah, it's it's there's so much to love about this Everton side. I can't believe we're still getting people. It's got real character, hasn't it? Yeah, it's got real character. There's so much to love about this this Everton team. There's um, Calvert Lewin becoming the striker we want him to be. There's a superstar in James Rodriguez. There's Luca Dean, who's amazing, who's getting better every game. There's we've got an amazing kit. The kit's just unreal. And when <laughs> and when we wear blue shorts, it looks even better. We've got probably. Well, well, we've definitely got one of the best managers. Go on, mate. I don't know why that full blue kit isn't our default because it oh, lads, it's unbelievable, you know. Um, we've got one of the best managers in the world, and I'd say he's definitely. I, I, I'd argue he's the best in the league at the moment, Ancelotti, because he's come into an Everton team with absolutely no confidence and put us right up there when um with, with and as well without our best players. And you look at Klopp, who's lost some of his best players, and they're falling to bits. Um, the managers of the season for me, yeah. Yeah, uh, and and Deitch obviously he just gets it by default, doesn't he? <laughs> well, he's keeping Burnley in the Premier League again, so it should definitely be in the conversation. Um, and there's so like this Italian defensive mindset we've got. Do you know when we're ahead and we just love defending against teams, but we don't seem yeah. to concede too many goals. It's just. It's amazing, and like I can't believe there's people still moaning because this is one of the best Everton teams I've seen. Um, moaning well, you just you know you get people mo- you, you get you always get the odd one, lad. But like people moaning about you know taking pl- like being too defensive and stuff like that. Oh and, yeah, that's gonna keep moaning because we revert back. We won't get a single point. But like you always get people when we're behind us, and they'll start like spouting rubbish and on Twitter about players not being good enough and stuff like that. But. Uh, You've got to have faith in the team, and we did last night. And you've got to play until the, uh, you've got to play until the whistle blows. And we did ninety fifth minute equaliser from Dominic Calvert Lewin. So, yeah, so just brilliant, brilliant. Uh, Owen Park's performance from Everton in the second half and real grit and determination to get that last goal. Honestly, I mean, mo- everyone performs three goals at Old Trafford. And only yeah, one. everyone should be laughing now. Uh, Amazing. Well, we've got four games in ten days now. After the Tottenham game, um, for the first time as well, Owen, we're playing on my birthday. Never happened before really? in the time. Yeah, seventeenth, well, uh, Manchester think, City, seventeenth of February. Yeah, yeah, mine was the seventeenth of December. But we've only have ever had one game to my memory on my birthday, which was Norwich at Roman, I think twenty eleven. We drew one one and it was about forty six shots. Well, Leon Osman, I think scored, but yeah, that was the only time mm. I can remember having a yeah. game on my birthday. I've never, never had one on my birthday. 
never have one with Bertie. So if we beat Man City, it'll be my fault. Um, but yeah, we'll leave it there, guys. If if obviously leave your opinions down in the comment section of uh, what you thought of the game. Obviously, still still a bit excited from it. Um, most have celebrated the. Probably the most I've celebrated an Everton goal all season. That unbelievable. Um, I didn't celebrate it at all because I was just waiting for the flag. <laughs> so was I, to be honest. But I didn't, I didn't celebrate any of the goals last night because I didn't celebrate the Decorey one because I was fuming off the first half. Still, yeah, I didn't celebrate. I didn't celebrate the Decorey one, but I, I celebrated the Rodriguez one. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm a lot more sort of. When we're not in the ground, I don't celebrate the goals. <laughs> All right, we'll leave it. We'll leave it. Yeah, we'll leave it there. Make sure you um like the video if you haven't already. Subscribe to the Toffee Blues and it uh, go down to EvertonDirect dot com. You get fifty percent off a uh, off the merch. Go and get yourself a Josh King shirt or a Calvert Lewin shirt yeah, or whatever. Big big um big thumbs up to Josh King. He won us the set piece in the last minutes to get in the box. So yeah, well done, Josh. <laughs> yeah. Um all right guys, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, and we'll see you in the next one.